the baby is a hot mess. And you know what? It's so sad because I'm so sorry to the red pill community that's watching this. I think you guys acted right in my last video. You didn't like come at me in the comment section, but I like, I'll say what I said then. If you come with your stupid comments, you're going to get deleted. Or maybe I'll just block off the comment section if I get some stupid uh, comments on here. But I really want to talk about the baby because the baby just kind of is the epitome of why the red pill community breeds. How would I describe him? Low value men. So they think that they're becoming these high value men, but really... If you, if you take too, many, too much of the red pill, you can become a low value man. Now, what's the definition of a high value man? Like a lot of people think that it's someone that has money. Just because you have money, you're high value. No, no, I guess like high value, a high value individual to me, because I don't think it's exclusive to a man or a woman, but a high value individual is somebody with a good and strong moral compass. Someone that doesn't throw out their three month old baby <laughs> and put the mother of that child, of said child, in distress. You know, in spite of the fact that, you know, she just had a baby three months ago. She's probably dealing with postpartum depression and all the issues that come with that. And people, I've seen some immature uh, red pill channels like targeting her for having postpartum depression or whatever. And I'm like, guys, do you realize that you were born, a woman birthed you, a woman birthed you and women suffer from giving birth. Do you know what women go through? <laughs> I think I made a video where I just briefly talked about it, but it's not an easy thing. Like, I know people who, who go bald, people lose their eyesight. There's a woman that lost her teeth just to give birth to like a piece of crap human being that throws their child out and disrespects the mother of their child. <laughs> Guys, women go through a lot. I think that all, especially in the red pill community, uh, there's a lot of like, there's a need to sort of like bring women down morally or however i don't know there's just like this like agenda to push women down or like to always blame women for the flaws that they find in their lives but like look at the, at the end of the day i always say this it's not about man versus woman that's a really silly concept to compare men and women or to expect a woman to submit to you or whatever nonsense it's really silly right because look we're all humans. And to ask a woman, especially like a black woman, to submit or to... What's, what's the word submission, right? When I look at the word submission, it means the action or fact of accepting or yielding to a superior force or the will or authority of another person. A superior force so this idea that a woman should submit to a man suggests that a man is superior to a woman okay well if we want to play that game if we want to play that game let's think about this hmm so a black man is superior to a black woman so therefore what is superior to a black man a white man a white woman <laughs> Look, my point here is <laughs> inequality is inequality. And once you participate in the divide and conquer mentality, and once you start believing the lie that you are a superior human being because of culture tells you that, well, you should fall in line and you should submit. If a black man is telling a black woman to submit to him, he should very willfully submit to a white man who by these standards of patriarchy, of uh, when I say social culture, have defined white men as superior to black men. But you don't want to do that because there's no accountability there. <laughs> you don't want to do that because no, it's different. No, it's different. No, it's not different because inequality is inequality. Look, number one, we are all human. We are all human. We are all equal, right? So <laughs> that's one aspect of the red pill community. But let's, I think I sidetrack a little bit. Let's get back to the baby. Such an unfortunate situation. I mean, 
I understand the need for him to record the situation because look, she's not innocent either. You know, you could see just the way she was hitting the phone that she was definitely the type of person that is violent. I don't know if it's because of the postpartum situation, but definitely a violent individual. Um, no, no wonder she was uh, taken and arrested. So it makes sense that he recorded her, but I don't know if it was necessary for him. I don't know if it was necessary for him to go live and put their business out on the streets. Um, I don't know if that was a wise idea, but more importantly, <sighs> kicking out your baby. <sighs> Look, I, you got to understand both sides. Where's he coming from? He's in his home. Fair enough. He's in his home and this woman is attacking him. This woman that he loved at one point, even though he denies her. And shout is not my girl. I ain't never been my girl. Is <laughs> my side bitch. It's your what? No, my it's side bitch. Shout is Ooh. a certified side bitch. Right. I love her. <laughs> love me. That's not enough. Nah. <laughs> he loved her at one point. Um, because there's evidence of him saying that he loves her. He loved her at one point, but then he decides, well, she's probably being toxic. I don't know what she she's doing there. Cause she's not, she's definitely culpable. She definitely was doing something that he wanted her out of his house. We don't know the, those details. But I just think it's just extremely irresponsible. I think the most important takeaway here is to just, before you have children, know the person that you've had children with. Because now that you've decided to have a child with this woman, right? And now that you've invited her in your home, because apparently they did, you know, get together before he was screaming at her. So you're still utilizing your relationship, your romantic relationship with her. You can't pick and choose in life. <laughs> I mean, people want to have their cake and eat it too, but you know that this is already a toxic woman, clearly. So perhaps um, just be wiser with your decision making, right? So I think he just made a fool out of himself. Um, just really like, he's obviously already someone that's not really respected in society. I mean, after the horrific things he said, just really offensive stuff that he said about the gay community, LGBTQIA plus community, very just really just ignorant and offensive things. So he's already just on the radar of like, this person is not, it's, it's not the, I don't know how to say it. It's a low value man. Let's say it like that. Low value individual. Then you, you're now kicking your three month old child. Then you have a child with another woman, right? You're having a child, like, so where are you having your children? You don't have, like, a family, nuclear family structure. You're just having kids wherever, they're, you know, and that's also, you know, I'm going to be honest, like, the lack of a nuclear family in the black community is partly why black people in America stay um, in, are, are cursed with perpetual po poverty as a generational curse. Because... It takes a nuclear family. That stability of a nuclear family is what can lift people. Uh, when they team up together, they work together, they can come out of poverty, they can build, you know. And so, and yeah, look, marriage is a marriage is a business contract. That's how it was designed. So he's having kids all over the place. What happens here? It's just like a scattered home. And then lastly, you just don't even know the people that you're having kids with. You just don't even have respect, like know the person. I know they've been together for three years, but if you then have known that she's a, a violent individual, why, did you, why didn't you course correct? Why did you then decide to have a child with her and act surprised when she tries to attack you? <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not condoning any sort of domestic violence. I'm not condoning any type of domestic violence. I am not on her side. I'm not any of their sides. <laughs> I just think that accountability is lacked from both parties. Um, and I think going back to my point, what is a low value man? Unfortunately, look, a man that's uneducated or a w person that's uneducated, that automatically puts you at a lower value. An uneducated person. And obviously he, just in the ignorance that he spews, is not an educated person. Then... 
um, morals, low, no morals, low to no morals, no moral compass. You know, the fact that you would put your child through that stress, that's just, that's low value there. That's low value. Um, and then obviously, I think not having financial stability, that's also low value. Um, but people, I think when, I, when you look at the Kevin Samuels, when you look at the alpha male strategies or just society at large, they will attribute financial stability or financial success to high value, but it's not true. You'll find that a lot of men, I didn't say all, but a lot of men that are, tend to be richer, they are morally bankrupt. You'll send, you'll see that in society. A lot of people that are only praised for being successful lack in other areas of, of life and therefore holistically they're not necessarily a high value individual i think about the nfl player you know obviously good, making good money throws his girl th th this video is just so unbelievably disturbing throws his girlfriend beats her punches her and throws her across the room i don't know what in your right mind would make you think that it's okay to do that to any human being man or female male or female but especially to a woman when you're an athlete you are a football player the most aggressive sport there is apart from rugby but similar difference and you you could see even the way he punched her he used all the weight and all the might of his football strength to beat her. I don't even understand how she's even alive from taking those blows from him. And obviously that is a regular thing that he does. And then he now has the audacity to flee. <laughs> That's the thing. Like you're clearly a coward, but you think that you're strong because you're beating this woman, but you're clearly a coward. <sighs> but you know what? It doesn't take just beating to be low value individual. It's not just about meeting. It's just about, I think it's really about moral compass, about where is that moral compass navigating you to? Um, anyway, so to the point of the baby, just, I think just completely irresponsible individual. And Danny Lay is not exempt from, you know, those things either. She's, I, 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 <sighs> I mean, I, I technically, I would say she's also a low-value woman as well from the things from her history. Um, but regardless of whatever her history is, the idea of this woman that has just had this baby and is probably in the most vulnerable place that she's ever been in her life, you know, who knows what sort of postpartum symptoms, symptoms she's going through? Who knows, like, the stress on her body caused by the pregnancy and for you to kick her out not even like give her some like maybe a week notice or whatever but just try to dump her out of your house instantly it's just so offensive and i think that anyone that's not sympathizing they should remember that they have a mother who gave birth to them maybe your mother's not in your life i don't know but either way regardless your mother went through a lot just carrying you for nine months and giving birth to you and out of that respect, that she didn't have an abortion and get rid of you, you should at least respect the woman <laughs> that has just given birth. <laughs> so even though, like, I mean, that sounds really harsh, right? But it is what it is. Your mom kept you. You're alive because she didn't have an abortion. So if you, when you look at it from that perspective, at least put some respect on pregnancy and the difficulties that women go through because of pe pregnancy. Um... So putting a woman out, you see, it's, it's, it's honestly behaviors like this that has caused the legal system to favor women when it comes to uh, child support, when it comes to, you know, it's, it's literally the behaviors of men, toxic men, not because most men, I mean, I don't know, a lot of men are not like this, but toxic men that have done this and have been abused, um, abuse the fact that they probably were in financially uh wealthier than their uh counterpart their women or their their romantic partner have abused that and that's why the legal systems are now breaking up families 
<laughs> making it easier for people to get child support as a single parent. So what does this say? I think there's abuse on both ends, but the abuse coming from the man, from the men historically, has been far worse. Um, so I see a lot of these red pill channels talking about this, talking about the difficulties men have, um, and I just think I just want to ask them to have accountability because they always talk about accountability from the female perspective and I agree with that 100% but they lack accountability from the male perspective they always sort of like avoid the conversations about uh, male on female violence um, just abuse of wealth uh, financial abuse and other forms of abuse and abuse works both ways women can be abusive as well um, but uh, when it's the most physically detrimental it's typically from a man when it's the most financially detrimental it's also typically from a man a man and so from a survival perspective right from a survival perspective <laughs> the risk that women have in these situations is much higher so this is why the legal systems have to support women um, and I think the the solution here is reconciliation it's accountability both parties need to be accountable but especially the men as they're making these red pill videos educate your people be honest tell the story holistically don't just tell half truths december 4th at 2 p.m eastern i'm going to be hosting a live webinar one time only how to monetize in the metaverse. I'm going to be talking about crypto. I'm going, to, I'm going to be talking about the creator economy. I'm going to be talking about essential things for you to understand about how to navigate in the metaverse. Because guys, we're already in the metaverse. People think that it's way behind. No, we're already in the metaverse. The fact that you're on your phone, you know, not in reality, but you're consuming things through the digital, that's technically the concept of the metaverse, right? So I'm going to be talking about it, uh, talking about things that you should start setting in place right now as a either creator or a business to make sure that you get there first, because this is the digital gold rush. And just like the real gold rush in the 1800s, it's not about it's not about being the best. It's about getting there first. Um, and when we see with Web One, uh, we see with Web One, we see all the opportunities that came with Web One. Amazon dominating because of they were first during web one. Do you want to take advantage of this, this opportunity? Cause there's going to be so many people that are going to become millionaires, billionaires, etc., from this metaverse space web three that we're entering or that we're already in. So guys, if you want to stay in the loop, you want to get information about how to navigate the metaverse and how to monetize now today in the metaverse that we're entering in web three, Guys, click the link down below and sign up for my webinar. All right. One time only. I'm not going there's not going to be any replays, there's not going to be any reruns 2 p.m. Eastern Eastern Standard Time on December 4th. Guys, go check that out. Leave a comment down below. Don't forget to like, follow, subscribe, all the above. My name is Genem and see you next time. A peace.